So this is the Western Digital P50 game drive. Now, you might be thinking to yourselves, Eber, what's so special about this drive? Well, it's one of the first external SSDs to incorporate USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2. And I know that might confuse a lot of people, but it's simply the fastest USB interface that's available in the market right now. But before you go out and get one of these new drives, there are a few things that you need to know about because since it is using a new interface, we did run into a few issues that are certainly a bit concerning. So let's talk about those and of course talk about the drive itself right after a quick message from our sponsor. The Razer Death Adder V2, the gaming icon that just got upgraded with a lighter body, next-gen sensor, and optical switches for maximum reliability and speed, the classic ergonomic shape handles like no other. Find out why 10 million other users love the Death Adder down below. All right, so let's talk about that USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 interface. At 20 gigabits per second, I repeat, 20 gigabits per second, it's double the speed compared to a standard USB 3.2 Gen 2, which is rated at 10 gigabits per second. Now, naturally, with every new USB interface, it's geared to be backwards compatible. So if you are uh, running a system with a 10 gigabits per second port or a 5 gigabits per second port, uh, this drive should work just fine. Right now, there are a few AMD TRX40 motherboards that support USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 interface, as well as a few X299 motherboards. But unfortunately, notebooks are completely out of the equation. So if your main primary machine is a laptop, well, you are most likely not gonna have a two by two port because it's, it's such a brand new interface. Gigabyte has also announced an add-in card. So from a speed perspective, why would you want something like a 3.2 Gen 2x2 at 20 gigabits per second instead of Thunderbolt 3, which gives twice as much as bandwidth? First of all, Thunderbolt is owned by Intel. So what do you know? AMD boards certainly take a lot longer to get certified with Thunderbolt 3, uh, which is why we only have a few AMD motherboards floating in the market with that certification. Also, Thunderbolt 3 drives are just ridiculously expensive. I mean, it just, it's not even funny compared to a standard uh, USB external drive. So with that out of the way, let's quickly talk about the Western Digital P50. So from the outside, it looks amazing. I mean, I love this matte black finish, but unfortunately it does show fingerprints. I also really like the font choice engraved at the top. It really suits the design. It's also super durable as it comes with the shock resistant certification. All in all, this is one of the best, if not the best looking external drives that I've ever seen. What do you guys think? Western Digital is targeting the P50 at gamers. And that makes sense because with modern titles like Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, it can easily eat up 120 gigabytes on your local disk. So it's better to have something like that on an external storage solution because you can use it on uh, multiple computers. And ideally, this is exactly what we were looking for, especially here in the office, because when we're doing benchmarking, it's easier for us to have our game libraries on an external drive without having to re-download all the files again. For console gamers, the P50 is both Xbox One and PS4 certified, but all of this does come at a cost. As you can see, compared to some of the other Gen 2 drives available on the market, you are paying a little bit more, but it's nowhere closer to the Thunderbolt 3 tax that's involved in some of the other drives that are available in the market. All right, so I think it's time to talk about some of the issues that we encountered on the P50 game drive from Western Digital. Uh, we encountered some of these problems as we were using it on a regular basis. So I'm gonna invite Mike over to talk about some of these issues in three, two, one. What oh. is this? You, oh, you, yes. you, you clap me in and I'm almost uh, out of frame. You gotta move over now, I gotta, man. I gotta move over. Damn it, now you're taking <laughs> over the frame. All right, so what are some of the issues that we experienced with the P50? Let's... Yeah, so for me, this was probably one of my most frustrating experiences benchmarking in a long, long time. The main reason for that is the problems that we found were so randomized, but they only came up when we were using it in its native 20 gigabits per second mode. That's true, yeah. Now, one of the things that I noticed was that there was transfer errors on random files. For example, some video files transferred totally okay, while others, they went almost to 100%, and then we started erring out on the drive. Another thing that we noticed is the Steam library folder that we wanted to transfer to the drive it never got past like 10%. It kept on airing out at the same time, every single time. But when we finally got that Steam library to transfer over the 10 gigabit per second port, mind you, um, some games just refused to load. So yeah. Civ and Warhammer, they just aired out completely. Yeah. Steam uh, crashed. Steam crashed. Yeah. On the other hand, 
GTA Grand GTA Theft 5. Auto, absolutely no problems with that game. None at all. On the Blizzard side, Modern Warfare went off without a hitch as well. Yeah. So we have no idea. There's no rhyme or reason to any of these problems. It's so weird. Another thing we noticed was drive speed inconsistencies. So the first time we plug it in, it runs at its full speed. Then the next time we plug it in, it runs at a completely different speed that's lower. And yeah, and then we had to re-plug it in. Yeah. And I, I mean, I know what you guys are typing on your keyboard right now. It is not due to our test system because we had an insanely fast rate array that was feeding this. So yeah. it's not like I mean, that would have been a bottleneck. We're just going to post a screenshot of Crystal Dismark on that rate array. It is insanely fast. Exactly. So another thing that we did is, first of all, we reached out to Western Digital and we reached out to other, all the motherboard vendors and they said look there's all these things that you can try and that's exactly what, what we did so we tried changing motherboards we yeah. tried changing platforms cables we even have two of these drives we picked up another one <laughs> it was the same thing over and over over again and i'm talking yeah. about fresh windows install uh old windows install different bioses we absolutely did. everything yeah. we've been testing yeah. this thing for better part of two weeks now yeah the other thing that we want to point out is that we're not pointing the finger here at Western Digital. The one commonality between all of this is the Asmedia 3242 controller that everybody is using right now yeah. to power everything from an X299 system to the external cards to the TRX40 platform. So again, we don't want to point fingers at either Asmedia or Western, Western Digital, Digital, but that is the one commonality between all this. So hopefully as time goes on, they're gonna figure out these issues. There's probably some platform incompatibilities. Yeah. So on Western Digital's part and everybody else's, it's very, very hard to diagnose this because it's so random. I mean, heck, we ran Crystal Disk Info after this thing aired out and it didn't pick up any errors. Yeah. And that's about the first time that I've seen a drive error out and Crystal Disk Info not pick up the information. So with that, I think we're gonna sort of move on to the benchmarks. Starting off with synthetics, it's pretty obvious that when the Western Digital Black P50 isn't having any problems, it's ridiculously fast. It's almost fast to a point where it almost matches our go-to Thunderbolt 3 drive. Honestly, we've seen a lot of external USB drives over these years, and this is by far the fastest one by a long shot. Even if you don't have a 20 gigabits per second port, it's just as fast as the SanDisk Pro Extreme SSD. Moving on to our transfer tests, here's where things start to go wrong. A full Steam library transfer, as I mentioned earlier, failed every single time. Sure, it transferred over that 10 gigabits per second port, but that's not what I really wanted to test. As for gaming, well, it was pretty interesting. Modern Warfare shader loading usually takes forever, but there really wasn't much difference between the external drives. Uh, the only true winner was that Corsair NVMe SSD. The same thing goes for Warhammer 2, other than the fact that the P50 couldn't actually load the game when it was in Gen 2x2 mode. What about Sith? Well, the WDP50 is fast as an external drive, but it could have been so much better if the game would actually load at that full speed. Finally, there was one game that performed without any problems, and that was Grand Theft Auto V. We were finally able to see what this thing could offer, and it was pretty amazing, shaving off almost 10 seconds of the same game loading time. All right, so you've seen the numbers. This drive is fast. When it's fast, it's fast, guys. Exactly, uh, but I want to know, I'm going to end this conclusion with a quick question. Would you buy the P50 right now? No, because to me, I actually prefer using that ROG Arion drive because that enclosure itself is like $60 and you can populate that with a traditional NVMe SSD, which I'm sure you can find on sale, uh, maybe Black Friday or anything. And like, you've got yourself a really fast portable NVMe SSD. Not only that, you can upgrade it down the line. So if you pick up a one terabyte NVMe drive, you can swap it out and bring a four terabyte drive if you want to. So user upgradability is certainly there. And that's what I love about that ROG Arion drive or just any other external enclosure. I'm gonna shock you. I'm gonna say that I would buy it. So there's only a certain amount of time in my belief until the issues are ironed out either on Asmedia side or the motherboard vendor side. And at that point in time, you're gonna have an ultra fast drive. At the same time, you can pick it up right now and it would still operate in that 10 gigabits per second mode. Yeah. And it's still Pretty one of the fastest drives yeah. on the market right now for the USB 3.2 interface. On the flip side, I would need the proof that the issues have been fixed. That's true. Yeah. You're basically paying for a future tech that's built in that necessarily isn't working, but you're hoping that it'll get solved in the future. So 
that's where I'm gonna draw the line. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you think about the Western Digital P50. We have two of these. We I have know, two of these, yeah. I don't know what you wanna do with, the, with them, but thank you so much for watching. I'm Eber. I'm Mike, and I've been frustrated at this thing for two weeks, but I'd still buy it. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one, guys.